good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever the case may be. Welcome to the 2018 Detroit Auto Show. I'm, of course, joined by the boss lady, the lovely Jody Lai here. And we're going to be taking you all around the show floor here in Cobo Center to, to really give you a taste of all the big reveals at the show this year. And we've got a lot. a ton yes. of important reveals. We're starting here at the Ram, but we'll get the Ford Ranger later. Oh, yeah, a lot Ford of trucks, Rangers, a Lexus. Silverado. Oh, the Silverado, yeah. Tons and tons of stuff. We have the new Avalon. We've got Kia Forte. So many things to get to. But the before people we get to mover all that, making noise. I, I went on the people mover you for did? the first time this year. How was it? That's it was Detroit's very mass transit. Convenient. It's pretty convenient. It goes to like 12 spot stops in like a two mile loop. Yeah, it's Detroit's it version good. of mass transit, but it's, it's pretty good. handy. You can park at the Rensen and get to Kobo Enough really easily. Enough of that. There's more important things to get to. But is this a public, is this a public transit podcast or what? <laughs> We're at an auto show. <laughs> oh, right. And not the mass public transport show. But uh, I did want to say that if you're watching this on Facebook, we're following yes. along. So make sure to ask us your questions and we'll try to answer them live. If you're watching this on YouTube, we can't answer your questions live. But leave them in the comments and maybe we'll come back to them later. Please leave constructive criticism. Say nice things. <laughs> we just did mean comments and we're still oh, yeah. recovering from that. <laughs> I got another up my Prozac prescription. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. But this. But since we're here. Yes, this is, I, I think this has got to be the most important product here at the show, the 2019, 2019 Ram 1500 pickup truck. We've been expecting this thing to come out, you know, for a while now, they've been working on it. We've seen a ton and of teaser photos. Exactly, and, spy uh, photos. Spy photos, yep. And here it is in all of its beautiful pickup truck glory. Check it out. This is the Rebel model. but. This thing has been completely re-engineered. The truck has lost about 225 pounds of mass. Around 100 pounds of that has been taken out of the frame itself, which is right over here to my left. Ben will swivel around here in just a second to show you that. And this is actually the Rebel version. So this yes. is a super off-road one. Um, this is the frame. So maybe you can talk to them a little bit exactly. about what it was built on, because that's where a lot of the biggest changes were. Tons and tons of advanced engineering went into this, obviously. But 98% high-strength steel. So that's where they took a lot of the weight out. Also a very interesting engineering point are these splayed frontal frame rails. They're an octagonal shape and they actually collapse in on themselves in a crash, obviously absorbing a whole bunch of energy, keeping the passengers safe. And this is a patent pending design that's not something we've really seen on other frames, on body and frame vehicles up until now. I did also want to mention something really, really important is that this new 1500 is now a hybrid which yes. is the first time it's ever happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really important because they use a new 48 volt electrical system mm -hmm. to, to help along with the powertrain. Yes. And so I believe there's two electrical systems. There's one that monitors all like the, the, the radio and stuff 12 like volt that, stuff, the 12 yes. volt. And then the 48 volt one helps with uh, idle control, um, it gives you start. the mild hybrid, exactly. Yeah, you so can get a little bit of a torque boost off idle. So they call it the e-torque system. Um, with the V6 engine, you get 90 foot-pounds at idle to really get this truck moving. If you go with the optional 5.7 liter Hemi, the system adds an additional 130 foot-pounds of torque. So if you've got a trailer hooked up, a heavy load, it's really going to get that, that going. That instant torque is going to be oh, really yeah. nice for acceleration. Yeah. As I mentioned, two engines available, Pentastar V6 with about 305 horsepower, 5.7 liter Hemi, that's going to be good for 395. And again, this is sort of a refinement of the existing Ram. I mean, it's all new, but they've taken what was good about the Ram you can get today and really improved it. You've got the available, you know, air suspension, coil springs at the rear. They've added just so many clever features so with the high hybrid tech system. Now, yeah. Yes. Uh, there's and actually a lot of cool interior features yes, yes. too. So let's go take a look. Come over here, Ben. I think this black truck might be the one that it has what we're looking for. It might have the really cool feature, the kind yeah, of standout feature that everyone was excited for. Yes, I believe it is right there. Um, let's yeah, get Ben to have swoop it. in yeah. there. Ben, if you just want to swoop inside there, one of the coolest features uh, of the interior is this giant new touchscreen that they have. It's basically the size of a giant iPad. It's 12 inches. Yeah. And I, Chrysler's, pardon me, FCA's U-Connect system, one of our favorite infotainment systems on the market. It is one of the, the best, market. yeah. Super easy to use, very intuitive, very fast. But this allows you to have like two different applications running at the same time on top of each other. Because there's so much real estate. Exactly. Yeah. So you could have like the, the radio up top and navigation on the bottom. and. 
be able to switch your favorite presets without getting lost. Yeah, and it understands all the same gestures that mm -hmm. tablet users are used to, like swiping and pinching and stuff like it's that. It's just super intuitive, right? It's really nice to see on a truck. Absolutely. Which generally isn't the most like progressive customer yeah, base. Exactly. So it's nice to see them updating with stuff like that. That, you, that you're used to seeing in like a Tesla, right? Um, also, what else did I want to mention? Oh, we have a question. Oh, we do, we do. What is uh, it? One of the questions is from Tim, and he asks, is the 2019 Mazda 3 at the show? I don't even think Mazda's here. Mazda is not even at the Detroit Auto Show this That's year, uh, which is too bad. And the new, the new Mazda 3 hasn't even come out yet, but it's due for a refresh, like, really soon. Yeah. I think sometime Maybe this year New it'll York. come out. Yeah. It's kind of, Chicago's next, New York is after that, but we'll see. Yeah. Also, um, what else, there was one other thing. This truck's going on sale very soon, like Q1 of this yeah, year. Yeah, next couple months. It's it's ready to rock. Yeah. This, is, this is what it's going to look like, this is what it's going to be. And interestingly, it's only going to be offered in crew and quad cab body styles. A regular cab version of this truck is not going to be available. Obviously, they don't, they don't sell a whole lot of those these, these days because trucks have become so elevated family sedans, yeah. you know? <laughs> People are buying them and commuting in them. And um. if you want a regular cab truck, you'll be able to get a, a version of today's Ram, which I think is called the DS platform. So the older version will still be offered in that sort of work grade yeah. trim. And I mean, the, the people who use it for work don't need all that fancy no. stuff anyway, right? So no. it makes a lot of sense. Um, so while we're oh, here, let's take a Jeep, look at the maybe? Jeep Cherokee, yeah. which is way back here on the stage. It's around here. Then it's convenient they're so close. Us, <laughs> I, I think this is where the press conference was. So yeah. tomorrow, this space will be full of other stuff because uh, the public days will start. Jody, look at the new headlights. So Signature feature. <laughs> that's one of the biggest new features of this uh, Jeep Cherokee. It's not all new. It's just been refreshed. And uh, one of the biggest change is that it doesn't have those ugly headlights anymore, the squinty ones that everyone hated. Mm -hmm. um, they were distinctive. They were, I would say, <laughs> They unique. were something. Okay. They were something. <laughs> the, so other, the other big news is that it gets a new engine option, kind yes. of in the mid-range. Mm -hmm. uh, the two-liter turbo, right? That's exactly right. What horsepower do we get out of that, Jodes? Uh, let's see here. It has 270 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. And I think that's the engine that most people will end up buying. It, it'll be the best in this package, yeah. I think. Lots yeah. of torque, Nobody good needs the V6, efficiency. right? efficiency. No, and, the, and though curiously, I think the V6 has the highest tow rating. They're claiming like 4,500 oh, yeah. pounds. That makes sense. But I would think, there we go. I actually wanted to show you back here because I seem to recall they made the, the storage space in the cargo area wider, so you can fit a lot more stuff in oh, there. Oh yeah, there's little uh, cubbies little in cubbies. there. Oops. And quite, quite roomy back here. So looks like there's some underfloor storage. Yeah, so there's little nips and tucks here and there to make it a better all around and more competitive because it was yeah. getting uh, to be a little bit old. Uh, we had a question about the Dodge Demon. They just want to know if it's at the show, and it is. is we can it? go see it later. Yep. Yeah, we, we're right here at the FCA yep. display. Anything else? Any questions or comments about the Cherokee before we head out? Because that's, that's pretty much the gist of it because yeah. this is a light refresh. It's a light refresh. There's not too much new yeah. about it. You can still get that 3.2 liter Pentastar like you mentioned. Yep. There's the 2.4 liter yep. multi-air engine, and of course the 2 liter turbo, which is the big news. But all in all, I think a ha more handsome product, and you know they it's spruced up the interior. It's definitely a lot better looking. Yeah. Yeah. They added some new accents inside, and just made a nice product a, yep. a little better. I mean, they sell so many of them already, so this is only going to help sell even more. Mm-hmm. All right. What are some of the other vehicles we've got coming uh, up? We're going to swing go by the see, Challenger, right? Yeah, the, let's go see the Dodge Demon But we've quickly. got a Kia Forte. We've got a Kia Forte coming. we got, like, the Ranger. Everybody was asking about the Ranger. Yeah, that's one of... That's another really significant reveal at the show. There were a lot of trucks. Yes, trucks. this is a truck, truck, truck show. Yeah. we got the Ram, which is the big one. Chevy, as we mentioned earlier. And, uh, of course, the Ranger, a new mid-size model for Ford. Uh, the, so. the Demon's over there. Why don't we go swing by the Demon quickly? And, of course, the new Wrangler is here as well, but we saw that earlier. Last year, L.A. Yep. And we popped out of the roof. So here's the is. Demon. I don't know if you guys had any more questions about the Demon. Like, you guys already know all about it. But there it is. What was it, 900 horsepower something? Uh, 840, <laughs> I think, in up-level trim. Yeah. So that's that. Of course, it's got skinny little drag tires uh, on the front. Yeah. 
Big meats at the back though, you need traction. And Ben, if you want to see the engine here, the supercharged Hemi. It's there it is, enormous. it's spinning. You can check out the blower. I like how they made it glow. Yeah, it was like kind of demonic. It's powered by yeah. LEDs, I think. So we have questions about the Cherokee. Oh. A, does it have LED headlights? Which I think on higher trim models it does, but not does, the base yeah. one. Uh, and if there is an eco diesel or not, and for not this for one, the there is market. no eco diesel engine for the Cherokee. Just to recap, there's a 2.4 liter multi air four cylinder. You can get a two liter turbo four and a 3.2 liter Pentastar V6. All right, let's go to right. let's Kia. go to Kia. That's next on the list. Yeah. So as you may or may not know, the Kia Stinger was awarded as AutoGuide.com's Car of the Year for 2018. What website was that, Jody? <laughs> AutoGuide.com. Yay! Auto, auto, got, dot com, what? Motor, motor guide. Motor dot guide, com. that's what it was. Motor guide. And this is it right here. Look and if you car. have any questions about the Stinger, let us know because we've spent a lot, I've spent a lot of time driving the Stinger. You were on the launch program so I know for it, right? all about it. You yeah. were doing burnouts in it. They, I asked permission first. I asked, wasn't it part of the event? Though? No, it wasn't. No one, you're not allowed. They don't just let you do burnouts. I thought they had a whole track events. or something that's No, they up. had an autocross set up. Uh, and I basically said, like, listen, are they going to get mad if I go out there and do some donuts? And they said, no, go ahead. And I did it. And apparently nobody else did donuts that day. So I was the only it's one. It's like an exclusive. You yeah. got a, a we scoop, got some I guess. Footage from it. Yeah. But the big news here in Detroit for Kia, we got a couple cars up here. The yes. Forte. So this is the brand new Kia Forte. It is a third generation model of this compact sedan and it's uh, supposed to do battle with like the Honda Civics and the Corollas of the world. Um, I think it, it, this generation brings it a lot closer to the Civic. It has oh, yeah. a lot more cool features. I sat in it briefly, Sammy, when Sammy Hajasad was doing um, his stand-ups for the, sort of the, the YouTube video. Mm -hmm. I sat in it. It looks like a Mazda, and I, that's, that's a huge compliment. Uh, yeah, they've done a lot of big improvements inside, but I do want to talk about the exterior okay, for a little we'll, bit. We'll do that first. Uh, then. Just because I was on the whole Stinger thing, yeah. and they've taken a lot of the design cues from the Stinger mm -hmm. and put it into the Forte. Like, you can see it has these new headlights and uh, this new grille, this tiger, what is it called again? The tiger shark? Tiger nose, or I something think. Something like that. Like that yeah. yeah, so it basically looks like a little Stinger, and people love the Stinger, so I mean, I think that was a really smart decision mm -hmm. on their behalf. Plus the overall look is just very like, it's clean, clean and yeah. elegant, right? What else is new? It's got to be, is it a little bit bigger? About three it's, inches uh, longer? longer, wider, I think lower, so there's mm -hmm. more interior space, more cargo space. All of the better -ers. Yeah, longer, I mean, lower, it, it's wider, got bigger. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, all the stuff that people want. It'll come with all the driver assistance. Mm -hmm. You know, that stuff is pretty basic these days. Like, it's pretty laughable if a car doesn't come with all Isn't that it? stuff. Isn't it? It's kind of sad, right? Yeah. And but there are a few that don't. Like, I don't know. Toyotas. Maserati, like, just got it. <laughs> and the Avalon gets CarPlay, right? Yeah. We also have a two-liter four-cylinder, which is only going to deliver 147 horsepower, probably focusing on fuel economy there, especially since yeah. they've got a new transmission. They're calling it, isn't it an ICVT no, or something they're calling it? No, it's a CVT transmission. But they're trying to rebrand it. They're trying yeah. to make it fun. But this is the, uh, the first CVT that Kia's ever used, uh, okay. and it was developed completely in-house. That could and be so, bad. Well, we'll see. They, they, they said they waited so long uh -huh. because they were ironing out all the complaints that people have about regular CVTs. Mm -hmm like the unresponsiveness, like the rubber bandiness of it all. Because they're going to have like, like Nissan, they call it uh, D-step logic, where it kind of shifts, right? Yeah, so, so I, have I that, imagine I think. this one will have like pre-programmed fake shift points so that it feels a little bit yeah, more yeah. natural for people. Because any enthusiast, they're going to see CVT and be like, yeah. I don't want that. But it still has a six-speed manual if you're nice. more into that, which is pretty cool that they still offer it. Because yeah. they're going to sell like two of them per year, let's be <laughs> honest. But it's awesome. Major but points for offering it. I do think that it, they'll offer some sort of like faster, high-performance version of the Forte to compete with like the SI mm -hmm. Civic or something like that. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. This Maybe is type purely R. speculation, but I hope it happens. <laughs> Someone wants to know, what is a CVT? 
Oh, um, a CVT stands for CVT stands for continuously variable transmission, yes. and it's a type of transmission that doesn't really have any gears. Mm -hmm. It has like a predefined. There are no steps. It yeah. like is infinitely adjustable. It's basically one. It's like a how it works is that there's two cones basically, right? Or and they, pulleys in yeah. it. Yeah, and they change diameter. And that makes the are ratios. Complicated. You ever? You, we could walk by the ZF booth or Eisen's here it's too. It's so complicated. And you look in the cutaways and you're like. I don't understand. You get kind of scared. I don't know. If anything away. breaks in there, I... Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we want to go to what, Hyundai next? Because they've got a small car. Yeah, Veloster, sure. Right? Yeah, sure. My That's Facebook a... is crashing, so I'm not oh, sure no. I can pay attention to the questions. And but I, I'm going to try to get it started again. With the handheld mic, I have a very hard time holding my phone I'm also, anyway. like, terrified of falling on these steps on one of these live broadcasts. Because <laughs> I've done it before. Oh, dear. <laughs> Um, I think we're actually Hyundai going isn't, isn't it that way? That way. We'll do an about face here. Yeah. All right. So what, Jody? Let me ask you this: what What is your overall feel, the vibe of the show this year in Detroit? <sighs> you know what? This year it feels a little bit quiet. Mm -hmm. I really don't feel like there were any really big surprises this year. Like you know, last year they had the stinger and it like blew the show away. Everyone mm -hmm. was freaking out about it. This year, I don't feel like there is one single product where everyone was just losing it over and yeah. But there's a lot Hyundai of product, there. you know? There's a ton of really important cars yeah. here, which is cool. But like, I kind of, I don't know, I kind of like to be surprised. Ford had a couple surprises, like the Bullet Mustang, which we'll probably that get to. That was a good surprise. Oh, you know what was a good surprise? Huh. Look at this segue. Ooh. The Hyundai Veloster N. <gasps> So we knew the regular Veloster was coming out at the Detroit Auto Show, but we were not expecting that the N would be here as well. And the N their is... Their new high performance. Yeah, it's yeah. basically their answer to the, the Type R Civic, right? Although it's a little it's, tepid uh, in comparison, right? Yeah, but I, I think it'll drive really, really nicely <laughs> for a couple of reasons. Mainly uh, Albert Bierman. Oh, yes, who's from the guy. BMW, he right? He used to work at BMW M. He did the driving dynamics for the Kia Stinger, and he did the driving dynamics for the Veloster N. So, I mean, I'm expecting good things. Like, it doesn't have this, the Type R's 300 horsepower or anything like that, but it's not that far off. Well, it's close. It's 275 yeah. in the end, right? Yeah, it's not that bad. I mean, it's down a little bit. It's a two liter, well, the standard model is a two liter Atkinson cycle four cylinder. Yeah. So this is the turbo. This one here that Ben's looking at is the turbo the Veloster Turbo, which will be the uh, kind of in the middle between the base and mm -hmm. the N. Um, and so you can see that they've kept the Veloster's shape and the, the kind of funky asymmetrical mm -hmm. half door. The three doors. Yeah, the two yeah. and a half door layout, which is kind of cool. But it's an all new platform, isn't it? Uh, Do you know? I actually don't know. I think yeah, it is. Is it an all new architecture for the Veloster versus Absolutely. the previous model? Yeah, I was going to say. Completely all new, all new. It's longer, wider. Stronger, faster. Oh, yeah. More cargo space. <laughs> Live right now. So, oh, what was that? Awesome. Give us a quick repeat. Oh, uh, uh, actually, I can't speak on, online. Um, but yeah, yeah, it is It is completely new architecture. Thank you. He was saying it's longer, wider, new architecture, stronger in every way. And uh, though, aside from the new grill, they look quite similar. They retained a lot of that design DNA, right? Yeah, which I love because it had, I don't know, I think the Veloster is one of the most unique looking cars on the market right now. I mean, I don't love the looks, but I give them major points for doing it. I like it. It's, it's, it's kind of ballsy to come out oh, with something yeah. like this, yeah. right? Especially because like hatchbacks and especially ones with only two doors. Yeah. You know, they're really not Nobody's... that, oh, they don't sell like crossovers do, right? I think it's super cool though. The one over here, the gray one, Ben, is the uh, the base Veloster. And so uh, the base Veloster, what's it powered by? So isn't it two liter naturally aspirated or am I looking at the wrong thing? Yeah. So this is the base one and it has a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine. The Atkinson diet model, right? Yeah, and it's basically <laughs> to be, you know, fuel efficient, whatnot. Six-speed manual or an automatic, yeah. same number of gears. And just going back to the uh, Veloster Sport for a little bit, it has a 1.6 liter turbo four cylinder, uh, and it has 201 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. How many torques? 195. Whoa. Yeah, and it has an overboost function, 
that uh, kind of gives but you 200 Jody, I don't care. Feet. I don't care. We want to focus on the blue one, okay? Oh, okay. That's way more important yeah. anyway. Duh. <laughs> no, you're dragging your I feet you over there. I thought you were going to interrupt me for some no good reason. I've learned, Jody. Yeah. So this is the <laughs> Veloster N. It is probably uh, one of my personal favorite cars that came out at this year's show for a couple of reasons. A, I just love this color. It's a beautiful I think color. I really hope they make this color a production color. Also, when Ben comes back around, we'll have to show him these enormous tailpipes. <laughs> what do we got under the hood? A two liter turbo, right? 275 horse. That's in the ballpark of the Type R, right? It's uh, close enough. It's a 25 horsepower deficit. But I mean, yeah. like in the real world, I don't think it'll be that noticeable. We'll see. Yeah, also 260 pound feet of torque. Torques. Yeah, front so, wheel drive, six speed manual will be the only transmission available, which I'm happy to hear about. And oh, it has. Yes. They're not dead no, quite yet. No, and Getting it there. has automatic rev matching. That's cool. Which I love. Because it makes you look like a hero. It makes me feel like such a good driver. <laughs> Rather than good. <laughs> <laughs> can you drive stick, Jody? I don't know if my lady brain can handle three pedals. <laughs> that you was know, a joke we were probably having from Car of the Year like two years ago. Here it is. Cause didn't somebody like it was they commented Some like oh commenters. could you even like, yeah like, I don't know was, she got was, a job here or something there she, was actual footage of me driving this car uh -huh. and someone was like I bet that's not even her <laughs> <laughs> we just put your ring on Ben's hand yeah <laughs> but uh, the N if, does that stand for Namyang right do you know uh something I, something like that because that's where their big r d yeah, facility is yeah. in south korea also because all the other letters were taken <laughs> exactly um, m is gone but they AMG also said that it looks like a like a chicane on a racetrack or something like that okay it's, yeah no i'm not buying yeah. that but it has performance brakes it has a performance exhaust and Look ben at these if you want to just ben. come out if you just want to come over here the, these exhaust tips are enormous. <laughs> like, just use my hand for scale. Like, that's huge. <laughs> and it sounds really cool, too. I don't know if you've seen the video on it yet, but it sounds gnarly. When I was in South Korea at Namyang, that's the only reason I know the name, when they did the, I got to drive the Kona for five minutes. Right. Flew me to South Korea to drive the Kona for five minutes, literally. Um, there's a, a lot of other stuff, but I'm, I'm being facetious. Anyway, they let the European media drive a prototype version of the... Why didn't they give it to us? Well, it was the i30N, so... Which we don't get, yeah. But it's the same stuff, it's right? the same platform, But they all yeah. got to drive it and like, oh no, you're gonna go over here, American and Canadian or whatever, you go over here, you're gonna have like a PowerPoint presentation. Oh, that's sad. Germans, Swedish, come over here, you're gonna be driving. You're so bitter, look at how salty you are right now. It's a good story, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe it's not, I don't know. Um, I think, we're, I think we're done at the Hyundai booth. You want Lexus? Yeah, let's next? go over to Lexus. Come on, Ben. Oh, you have to look at this. This is the funniest thing here. Oh dear. This is, so this Veloster is gonna be an Ant-Man. And like, I don't really follow comic book stuff. It's what? So I don't know. I don't know. This looks like a like a. What's your version of Canadian Tire? Like Pet Boys or yes, something? Yes, yes. <laughs> it looks it's like looked, a, a, a lot Pet of hot Boys glue special. was used yeah, on this one. Yeah. But I think that was the point. I think they were trying to make it like really outlandish. Side pipes, giant rear tires. It's like something you'd see on Woodward. It's funny. Yeah, and they have like, a sense of humor. Yeah, right? it's it's okay. Yeah. But uh, let's keep going. Is, is this Spider-Man? That's the Wasp. I think this is Spider-Man. No, it's the Wasp. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the best. Uh, okay. All right, let's, let's leave this stand. <laughs> Jodes is leading the way. We're going to okay. Lexus. So we're heading over to the Lexus booth to see that over there, which is the new concept car they have for a new flagship SUV. It's called the Lexus. LF1 Limitless Concept. I don't love the name, but well, you know, they whatever. Won't keep that, right? Yeah. So this previews a brand new flagship crossover that's actually gonna be added to the Lexus lineup. 
Where in the um, range? So right now the LX is the flagship cross, or sorry, it's an SUV. It's a body on frame, yeah. old school SUV. Really old school. Uh, this one won't be that, obviously. Yeah. This one will focus more on luxury and style rather than off-roading mm -hmm. because most people don't go off-roading anymore. So it makes or a lot of sense. if you do, you buy a yeah. Wrangler, right? Yeah, so this one, uh, it won't seat, it won't have three rows. It only seats four, which is interesting. But no powertrain info, no, right? No, because it's, it's all just the concept. Yeah. yeah, so they're like, it could be a hybrid, it could be an electric, it could be a plug-in hybrid, it could be anything. Fuel cell. Fuel cell, yeah. yeah. Knowing Toyota, it could be all of those things. And yeah, <laughs> so they, right? they haven't really given us any details on that. What about a production date? Any? Nothing yet. Nothing? It's so far away right yeah. now. I'm thinking like next year we'll see a version that's maybe closer to production and then the year after that maybe so maybe we'll say like 2020 something like that might come out is this based joe did you know on the um the ls architecture uh that's actually they said it's based on like a rear drive chassis okay which is interesting because it's a pretty big vehicle oh it's huge yeah well it'll be the new flagship right yeah, so it has be. to be huge what do you think of the grill by the way the way they because you're you were hosted by toyota lexus yeah. on this junket the way it just swoops back. It's interesting. Like if you didn't like the spindle grill, you're oh, not gonna no. like it now. So, but I mean, no. um, I, the reactions from normal people are that like, oh, it looks cool, but maybe it's a bit too much. Yeah. Uh, so it was actually designed in California by uh, the Calti Design Research Studio, which is their in-house mm -hmm. um, design. Establishment. Oh, there's, the doors are open. Yeah, ben, 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 if you want to look. look inside, I don't. Yeah, you can see it. So the inside has like brushed copper accents, which is a similar color to the cool color they have on the exterior. Should we? Should Ben break the rules and jump up there and look? <laughs> I don't if know. He, if he the ladies, down, the ladies giving don't us Don't distract some her, <laughs> Jody. But I really hope uh, those brushed accents kind of make it to production. I think it's so pretty. Hyundai, not Hyundai, uh, well technically Hyundai, but the Genesis brand is doing interesting things with like copper colored I love that, accents. yeah. It's I saw very cool. They had something like that on a uh, Cadillac concept, the Escala, yeah. a couple years back as well. That was a while. Yeah, and they did something cool, so there's like wood accents, but I don't know if you can see it in there. There's like a like a light pattern in the door that they're kind of mimicking wow. what Rolls Royce does. Yes, with the, head, the star light yeah. headliner, whatever it's called. Yeah. So I think that's kind of neat. The definition of frivolous, but really cool. I love it. It's really cool. I'm all into like really extra stuff like that. You are a fashionista. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> the YouTube people didn't like my clothes. Oh, no. No. And they didn't like me. <laughs> they don't like you, period. They good oh, I, yeah. I don't blame them. I don't like me. Yeah. So uh, what else can we say about this? Oh, they, they pretty much said, oh, you know, it'll be capable of completely hands-free driving. Uh -huh. You can use it as a concierge to book hotel rooms and find you places Who to eat. Who would do that? I, I don't need know. a hotel room. Through your car. I don't know. I think we have apps just, for that. I would just use my phone or, you know, plan ahead. Yeah. The novel idea. But so, what are we heading next, right? Uh, let's go to Toyota. There was a pretty okay. big debut over at Toyota. Oh, yeah, something comfort yeah. focused. So if you have more questions, let me know. I'm just, uh, I don't know if this is updating quickly enough. I'm gonna, I'll pull mine out and see. It's very hard for me. I haven't had it out just because it's okay. difficult to hold three things here. All right, guys. It, what starts with an A, Jody? In, and ends in Valon. Mmm, that's a toughie. That's a toughie. Oh, it's up there, Ben, on the uh, little stage the up there. One. So, you guys, I know you were all hoping to see the Toyota Supra at this auto show, but instead we have been blessed. <laughs> we have been blessed. We are truly blessed. <laughs> by the Toyota Avalon. <laughs> you say that with such disappointment, Jody. Why? Well, because the Supra, everyone just wants to see a Supra, right? Yeah. So, Which may not even be called Supra. That's correct. You got a hot scoop. Scoopity scoop. Yeah. So right now, I don't know what they're doing to it. They might be like cleaning it or something. But uh, the big news about this is that it's basically the most Lexus Toyota out there. It looks more like a Lexus. It'll be comfortable like a Lexus. Mm -hmm. um, that's what the market wants. I mean. Oh, yeah. 
There's nothing wrong with a car that's comfortable and quiet. It'll be great. Like, it'll be smooth and quiet. And this one, actually, like the Camry, they're starting to focus more on performance, right? It looks a lot like a Camry. Hey, Ben. You can't hear us, There's but one the audience can. Oh. There's one over here, too, that you can look at, this blue one. So, the <laughs> funny enough, one of the biggest announcements with the new Avalon is that is it is the very first Toyota to come with Apple CarPlay, which is huge. This, this, that's a brand new technology. We've never <laughs> seen that before. Toyota has never, they've up till now, refused to put that in their cars. Mm -hmm. This breaks that trend. But however, there's no Android Auto, which is, I use an Android phone, so that's no good Your for SOL. me. But they have Amazon Alexa, if you prefer that. Uh, we've got a question from Vadim Lopachuk. Is that a Ukrainian name? It sounds like it could be. Anyway, asking about the grill. Can you show that, Ben? Swing around here. I don't love the front end, I'm not gonna lie. A lot of people think it's a lot of grill. It's a whole lot of grill. It's... They got chain link fencing on sale and went to town. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of what you come to expect from Toyota these days, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, let's see what else. It's longer, lower, wider. You know, the front and rear <laughs> overhangs are shorter. They're just basically the trying to make it look stuff. a lot sportier, right? Is the powertrain um, a carryover? Yes, it's still the three and a half liter V6, although it, new, it gets a new uh, eight-speed automatic transmission. Okay. And Very unfortunately, nice. there is no output figures yet for the V6. Mm -hmm. It's a carryover. It's going to be so 301 horsepower. It's not going to be like too the, much more than the, the other one, but they did promise that it is more powerful and more fuel efficient than the last <laughs> one. Uh, it also comes as a hybrid. John Princing says grill is terrible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't. It's not I can't much disagree. better in person. See, we got something very interesting going on right now, Ben. We have competitive analysis going on. This gentleman was shining a flashlight, <laughs> flashlight in the grill. Right into the grill. Where's because the tape measure? I know. I'm waiting for the dial calipers to come out. Yeah. That's a big con. That, that's something that pisses us off. This is media day. There are two days at the auto show, right? Mm hmm. And there are always all kinds of people wandering around with clipboards and tape measures. They somehow get in. They're either part of automakers or other companies that, I yeah. guess, manage to get media credentials, and they get in the way, yeah. they're measuring things. Anyway, stop complaining for a little bit. We have a question, and it's from Carlos, and he says, uh, is this riding on the Camry platform? And the answer is yes, it is. It's the new TNGA. <laughs> TNGA. Global. No, Toyota, new global architecture. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, that is Avalon. Um, there's actually, so, Interestingly, there are a lot of interesting uh, performance upgrades that it gets, which is the first time they've ever been used on an Avalon. So, for example, you can see like the quad tailpipes, which, Exciting. which might be a bit extra for I, an Avalon. But they have I, a multi-link rear suspension for the first time. Well, that's TNG ever parts, on a Toyota. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it'll also have uh, an adaptive variable suspension for the first time. So, you know, you can get that soft, cushy ride, but also supposedly be able to hustle it through some corners mm -hmm. and not feel like you're going to get car sick. I see engine sound enhancement. Yeah, so that, <laughs> that always gets, you know, weird reactions from us because it basically means fake noise. Mm-hmm. They could, couldn't just, make it the real way. So Yeah, they, so they're just synthesizing, you know, V6 sounds mm -hmm. and, like, pumping them into the cabin, which isn't you know, something that we really like. We'd rather just have the real thing. Like, why complicate it, right? Mm -hmm. We've got um, more measurements yeah. going on, Jody. You got a gentleman with a clipboard. <laughs> I want I so badly want it. I know. Good in I bet he works for Honda or something, right? Probably. I think it said Subaru on his bed. Anyway, <laughs> we're, we're talking about drama yeah. here. And so the other important thing is that, you know, it'll come standard with Toyota Safety Sense P, all their safety stuff and uh, their adaptive cruise control. It's all there. All the bells and whistles, because yeah. really, it's, the Avalon traditionally should kind of be a Lexus, right? It's and the, the closest way that thing, it's, yeah. It, the features it offers and everything, the comfort. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much at that level yeah. now, just without the fancy badge, right? Um, we have a concept next, though. Yeah, true. Let's see if I have any other questions here. Avalon going to be in Canada. I would imagine. Yeah, Has yeah. the Avalon been sold in Canada? Yeah, they sell the Avalon in Canada, and it'll arrive. 
Um, Jessica so, Schuler wants to know, only Toyota cars, no Toyota SUVs. I don't think they're they really new. They didn't debut anything. Like, they brought the FT4X yeah. concept, which was, when did that come out? Geneva or something like that? I want to say New York. I remember mm, doing the video. Maybe, yeah. You might be right. We do so many of these, it's hard to keep straight. It's but uh, let's go over to the next one. So let's go over to Nissan. Here's a man that knows a whole lot. This is Christopher Sawyer with the virtual driver. I don't know a whole lot of nothing, but okay. <laughs> Stop lying, come on. <laughs> what do you need to know? I just have a quick question. Sure. You've been doing this a long time. Yeah. Like a long time. 30, 35 years, yeah, okay. What do you think? Thanks for reminding me I'm old, thank you. It's my job. <laughs> but uh, a lot of reveals this year. What's your feeling, what's the vibe of the show, and what is your? what do you think the most important product is? Oh boy. How do you want to define vibe of the show? It's up to you. Well, if I were to define it for myself, I'd say it's a dying show. And I'm saying that for one reason, and that is that each of the manufacturers are killing the show without realizing it. And they're going for the, I've got to be in clear air nonsense. The, and it's sort of, I ha the only way I can describe it is like this. It's, the difference between having one bomb go, one large bomb go off in one area versus 20 going off one right after another in another, it, all over the town. By the time you get to the 15th one, you're like, okay, I'm really tired of this, let's stop this. If you have the one explosion, everybody's going, wow, what happened? What's going on? And it's, there's an excitement to it. Uh -huh. They deflate the excitement of this. I know it's good for the city because of all this offsite stuff that they're doing but it takes, starts sucking the life out of it. And when you don't have a lot of concept cars that, that say, here's you know what we'd like to do, or here's just a flight of fancy. That's a good point. It's not exciting. And I'm, maybe I'm just jaded. Well, you'd know that better than anybody, wouldn't you? Um, but that's, that's sort of the way I feel about it. As far as most important vehicle yeah. here, wow. <sighs> I'd say there's a few of them. I picked the Ram. I was just going to say the Ram. The Ram just blew me away in what they were able to do with that vehicle. There is a hell of a lot of engineering in that car. Uh, Silverado's good, but I think in some ways Ram is better. We're going to get to the Silverado shortly. It's on our list, so don't worry. Yep. But and Jetta is important because it's going back in the sedan market. Mm -hmm. I was just talking with someone from this company right here, Toyota, and asking him about the whole idea of, well, Ford's pulling out of cars, Chrysler's already pulled out, is this the way of the future? Because it doesn't ring true with me. And he said, we have seen 64% truck, the rest cars, and it's been declining 3% a year for cars. He said, but that's starting to flatten out. He said it'll be 2% next year, maybe a percent. So you're year. saying the car business is starting to come back. In so five years, we're going to be sitting, everybody's going to go, and I got to get back in the market. I'm looking forward to that. But we got to run. Well, so thank you, Chris Sawyer, for your time. TheVirtualDriver.com, is that right? Yes, or the simulated motors, the way he keeps going me. <laughs> Good to Here, see you. I would shake your hand, but my hands are full. So I'm going to do a, a shoulder bump All right. and send you on your way. Have a good show. Thanks so much, Chris. What are we checking out next, Jodes? Okay, we're going to go to the uh, Nissan booth here because they came out with a really cool concept car. And it's right up on the stage there. The cross motion? It's called the cross motion, yes. And this is it right here. So obviously it's just a concept. They don't have too much information about it at this point. Uh, basically, it could it could preview what the next generation Xterra will look like. It's a six-row, three-passenger vehicle, right? Yeah, and actually, one of the coolest parts of this concept, besides how it looks, like I actually really like the way it looks, is the interior. So, Ben, check out the interior. Why can't they have a production interior with like those floating know, seats? It'd be so, so cool. cool. So one thing about the interior that I wanted to point out is that it has these uh, really cool wooden accents here. And they use a traditional Japanese building method where you can kind of see it here where they're like, they cut out notches and everything kind of fits in like a puzzle. And it makes it actually really strong. I don't, I don't actually know what that floating cylinder is, but it's cool. 
Folks, if you're just joining us on the Facebook Live video here, if you've got any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure to post those up. And during, again, the live broadcast, we'll do our best to answer those for you. Someone wanted to see the kicks, the Nissan kicks. I'm sure they, well, right there. Right? Yep. Kicks, very, uh, you know, B-segment crossover. That's a segment that's growing yeah, like it'll, crazy. Yeah, it'll, it'll do battle with, like, the HRV and the CHR and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I have mixed feelings about that segment. Like, um, I, I don't get think it. it should exist. I like, understand. get a small car, get a hatchback if you're going to get something that small. Especially if it only comes in front-wheel drive. Yeah. Like, a lot of the... I can understand if you want all-wheel drive and, you know, something like the Fit isn't offered in all-wheel drive, so you get the HRV. Yep. But... With some of these, like the Nissan Kicks, I believe is only available front wheel drive, and that's that goes with the uh, the CHR as well. So Caleb is asking, is there any new Nissan Z? No. No. Every and time actually, we come to one of these shows, we're, we're like begging for a new a new Z, but unfortunately, it's just not one of their priorities right now. Their priorities is crossover. Because that's where the money's at. Yeah. And at, curiously, I sat down yesterday, the first press day, with their vice president, his name escapes me right now, uh, of product planning for North America. And I asked him, you know, is the Z going to be around? And he said, yes, it's a cornerstone of their lineup. Obviously, they don't sell a lot of them. Yeah. Obviously, the current model is getting quite old. But the impression I got, and I have to go over my notes still, was that it's not going away. It's still going to be in the lineup. Yeah, but every time we ask anyone at Nissan about a new Z car, they say something different. So we've heard last year, they were like, oh, it's not a priority for us, yeah. which was scary for me because I mean, well, does that mean it's just going to die out? Mm -hmm. um, I hope it doesn't because other than the GTR, like what's the sports sporty offering, right? Nismo uh, Sentra. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Jody that. Giving Jody the dry heaves. Yeah. All right. Where are we going next? We're leaving innovation that excites. Let's go to infinity. And beyond. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. It's that over bad. there. Oh, it's over here. All right. We got a question about the GTR. There's nothing to say, but there's one right there. Yep, there's the GTR. You've driven a GTR, right? Actually, no, I haven't. You haven't? I haven't driven a GTR. Crazy although fast. <laughs> I hear it's amazing because it's so mechanical. Yeah. You can feel it all kind of working. You need a track to drive it on because using it on the street yeah, there's is no just way. absurd. All right. It's Let's like, head over to the Infinity booth where they came out with actually a really cool concept car. It's called the Q Inspiration Concept. Oh my god, whoa, look whoa, at Sammy! Whoa, 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 whoa. Sammy's here! Hey guys, hey, how's Sammy? it going? This Hello. is Sammy Hadjassad, he's our road test editor, and he has the best suit. Hi, Facebook! Um, uh, you guys are made it, have made it all the way to the Infinity uh, yeah. booth here. Talk and to this us, is, Sammy, what's new at Infinity? Here, let me, this is awkward, can, I get, can we get to the theme? I'm gonna hand you the mic. All right. Fly, my young child. Well, right here at Infinity, <laughs> there's a couple of things that are really catching my eye. First and foremost is the brand new QX50. And uh, you know what? We're going to be driving this real soon. And the number one thing I want you guys to take a look at is the interior. Look at this beautiful two-tone interior. I can't get enough of this. Now, as you know, the Infiniti QX50 comes with a very advanced variable compression ratio turbocharged engine under the hood and that's the big story with this car and you know what that's the story that's found right behind us in the brand new Q Inspiration concept. Now I think this is one of the most fashionable cars of this show and the thing that really catches my eye beyond the you know chiseled nature of this concept car it has to be those orange accents on the wheels. How many concept cars do you see with orange accents? I love it! And you know what? It's a concept car, so of course it has rear hinged uh, rear doors here. But that's so that we can see inside the car, and you can tell that there's some high quality stuff in here. Look at that leather seating, those dimples in there. That's so cool. And that wood trim. It has this matte finish, and it's very high texture. And you know what? Infinity says that we can expect to see some of the cues in this vehicle within three years on a production car. Three years, Sammy? <laughs> That's right, Greg. And you know what I love about Infinity? They didn't just show us one concept car, but around on the other side of the booth, 
There's another concept car that debuted in... Another concept car? Yeah, another concept car that showed up in Pebble Beach. It's one of my favorites. Oh, I love this one. You love yeah, this one. it's so it's cool. It's the Prototype 9, and this is a an electric open-wheel concept car. It's just over here. Come on. Hey, guys, how's it going? Oh, Jody, I love this thing. Although I don't think I can I can squeeze in there. This is uh, this might be a trick for you. <laughs> what? I don't think I can get in there. No, I don't think they'll let us actually sit in it. No, but, I mean physically, uh, I can't fit in. There. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> can you imagine driving this thing? Look at how can far back how the seating position it is be? to the front wheels. Yeah. <laughs> I love this thing. Anyways, I'm sorry I hijacked your uh, your live stream here. Where are you guys off to next? We're where go where to do we go next? Ooh, Volkswagen. Yeah. Can you see the new, new jet. You know about the Jetta. This is seriously cool, though, Sam. This, eh? This is so cool. What was cool. it like? At, they revealed it at Pebble Beach, right? You, yeah, you were there. Yeah. What was that like? It was a spectacle. I mean, everything at Pebble Beach is over the top. And you know what? Infinity just didn't disappoint with this thing. It's still stunning. So, shall we go next yeah, door? Yeah, let's go next door. Thanks, Sammy. Bye, Sammy. Bye, Sammy. I'm glad Sammy we was there to help us out. We got a whole lot of trouble here in the PR department. Oh, we just had a request to look at the new QX80. Which is right here, guys. It's big. <laughs> what is that? That face, it's what? big. It's really big. Um, <laughs> so the QX80, it's basically the same QX80 that was in the last generation one. This one's just a refresh version, so it gets a new face. Um, the engine is a carryover. Pretty much everything is a carryover. It gets a few tweaks on the inside. And they also got rid of the portholes. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Is that your whale That's noise? That's like foghorn. Oh, I thought it was Port a whale. nautical. That'd be like, oh. <laughs> All right. Shall we check out the Jetta? Yeah, Ben, let's go check out the Jetta. <laughs> Jumping on over to the Jetta. This might be one right here, it sure in fact. Is. Yep. This one's the Jetta, but let's look at this orange one. Is it the R line? I don't know. There is an R line over there, but it doesn't matter. They're yeah. all the same thing. So this is an entirely new Jetta. It of course rides on the new NQB platform, which is real, which sounds dismissive, but it's really freaking good. It's a great platform. It like, works in Audis. It works so in Volkswagen. Good. It's so flexible. It's yeah. rigid. It's roomy. It's everything. Yeah. So it might not look that new, but it is entirely different from the one that came before. Mm -hmm. It's got a more mature look inside and out. It'll have that new digital dashboard that's yeah. like straight from an Audi. So it'll be really high tech, very fancy. Uh, it's still powered by the 1.4 liter turbo engine, which is a carryover from the last one. But it should and, be more than uh, fine, 147 horsepower. That's what they're getting in the new Forte too, right? Yeah, so it's pretty competitive. And it has a new 8-speed auto. Yep, although you can still get a 6-speed manual, which yes. is fantastic news. Let's see. I don't auto know, start, like stop, stop, start. All the, all the stuff that you're expecting now. Like, we were talking about that earlier. It'll have all the adaptive cruise control. Exactly. Uh, I know. get so tired. If I have a vehicle review, I, get, I should just keep a sticky note with that written in it and just copy and paste. Because it's like every car is the same yeah, thing, right? pretty adaptive much. Adaptive cruise, automatic but emergency brake, blind spot monitors. they all have different names for it. Like, different trademark exactly. names Exactly. I don't ever use those. I just call them the same yeah. generic. Yeah, so, so that's, that's the new Jetta. If you have I any questions, let us know. The, some people were commenting on the grill, how big it is. I think it's a very handsome car. I like it, yeah. Volkswagen does that well, very well, that mature, it's like conservative. upscale. Yeah. yeah. But this car's going to look good in 20 years, I think. Whereas, and a like, Civic will not. Not so much. I can guarantee you, yeah. yeah. Especially maybe, well, I'm not going to say that about the Type R, but a Civic, I would agree. So we're gonna swing by maybe X2, just do a quick flyby. Yeah. If you yeah. Want. I mean, the X2 debuted a little, like a few months ago, I think, but it's a significant product. So let's go take a look. What's so that? We got, oh, that's a Renault Twizy, I think. Can I drive that? We'll flag that. We gotta go find the Mala powertrain, guys. And He's yes. going so fast. I kind of want one. For Toronto traffic, I think it would be quite handy. I bet it would fit in the bike lane too. I could just like terrorize the bike lane people. <laughs> AJ wants is saying bring back the hundred twenty thousand dollar Phaeton. I'd say Phaeton? why not? Sure. Yeah, except nobody purchased it. But it was a cool car, I think. 
and uh, Jessica. Well, the new one, the Arteon, will kind of be like a Phaeton, but better, right? Where's For Ben? I don't know. He's still following the Twizzy. <laughs> there he comes. Ben was obsessed with that thing. <laughs> He's running now, Ben. That's not, be careful. Don't it's fall. a trip hazard. Don't fall. Um, we got a question from Jessica. What is the, what's the best family size SUV at the show? The best? That's a tough question. I think um, maybe we are at the VW booth. Maybe the, the Atlas, Atlas jogged her mind, which isn't probably the best. Or it's the new roomy. Ascent. The new Ascent Subaru is supposed is gonna to be, be pretty good. good. Yeah. Pilot's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Navigator. Actually, we're, we're going to see one later at the Ford booth, too, so yeah. stay tuned for that. But here's the X2. Yeah, so this is the new BMW X2, and there's not too, too much to say about it, except that it's like a sportier version of the X1. <clears throat> Same architecture, front drive yeah, based. Yeah, you know, it's got a little bit of a different design. Mm -hmm. um, they were and, making a big deal about the kidney grills. They sort of inverted them so they're wider at the bottom yeah, than they are at the top, yeah. which and, I guess and, is the first time they've done that. I, in general, it just looks sportier and a lot more planted than the, uh, the X1 that it's based on. One interesting new thing that they're doing Ben, if you want to come, oh, I'll just go over there, Ben. So one thing that's new is this badge on the C-pillar. Um, and I'm not really sure why they put that there, other than the fact that people really want other people to know that they drive Isn't a BMW. It, a th <laughs> it might be. Isn't it a throwback feature? I think decades ago they used to do that. No? I don't, I don't think so. Oh, I don't know. I'd have to look. It seems like a retro touch to me. I... I don't know. I'm. I think it's a little bit much. Sportier proportions here, a little bit lower and shorter. Yep. For the overall vehicle size, but. Um, and they said that. <coughs> typical BMW yeah. interior. Yeah. So it doesn't nice. have. It's not so much like the X4 and the X6, where it has that really sloping roof line that just like makes practicality zero. Yeah. This one will be a little bit more practical, which is nice. Just think of it as a more stylish X1, Pretty basically. Much, yeah. We, we do have a question it. about anything new from Mini. I don't think, not, was there? Not at this auto show. I don't even think they're here. They, yeah. I well, don't think they're usually here. Right. Yeah, they're, they're, they're just not at the show. Attached at the hip with BMW, but I don't see All them. All right. Let's go over to Mercedes. Mercedes had some really big news. Do you want to wander through Audi while we're doing that? Yeah, sure. I don't sure. know, somebody it was earlier was asking about that. Let's see here. So this is the Audi booth. Um, I guess the real big thing here would be the A7. Yeah. So this is the first um, public debut of the Audi A7. Although it, it came out a couple months ago online. But this is the first time we've seen it in person. Just as beautiful as yeah. the A8, right? I, I actually think the A7 is uh, one of my... It's Ray, one of oh, our Twitter that? followers oh, yeah. and friends, yes. No, no problem. The A7 is know, actually one of my favorite Audis. I think, I think it's just beautiful. All right, Mr. Mitrowitz, what do you think of this A7? It's really nice. I just can't imagine how hard it is to fix it if you ever crash it. <laughs> yeah, that would be a, certainly be a concern of mine, especially at the, the price that it costs, right? Yes. How much is it again, do you know? Off the top of my head, no, but a lot. Oh, I'm sure it's going to be a lot, but it's really nice, so. Do you want to get in here? No, I think we're good. We're, not, we're just working our way along we're the show go floor over here. We're going to Mercedes. No. Hi, Ray. Hello. Nice to finally meet you. <laughs> I didn't want to bother you guys because you're busy. That's okay. You can come catch us later. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to be known your life? I'm not sure. Next hour, half 10 hour, minutes, yeah. 15 minutes, I don't know. All right, Ben, let's go to Mercedes. Vic is asking about Dodge, and unfortunately, that was at the very beginning of this uh, yeah. webcast. We he's, swung he's by really the- He's really interested um, about like autonomous driving and yeah. stuff like that. That's his like area of study. Okay, so we're heading over to the Mercedes booth where they had two really big reveals. The first one is the G-Wagon, which I love. I've always wanted to drive a G-Wagon and who was the special guest at the reveal, Craig? Yeah. <laughs> it was Arnold Schwarzenegger, the governator. Governor of California, yes, I know. So I couldn't this resist is it trolling right here. in my video. This is the new G-Wagon, and it looks a lot like the old G-Wagon, but it's that completely was the whole point. new products, yeah. Basically, D 
Dieter Zetscher, when he was giving the presentation, said there were only three carryover components, and one of them was the exterior door handle. And very importantly, they wanted to maintain the iconic door closing sound. So why don't we swing around the back here? I'll hold the mic next to the door, and Jody, maybe you can give it a slam for okay. us. Here All right, go. I'm going to open the door and slam it. So there's like a little click there. I don't know if you heard it, but that's the signature G-Wagon. And they kept that yeah. in the new model. So this thing is still body on frame, as it should be. You've got a live rear axle, axle with four trailing arms. Three differentials. Three Count differentials, three. each of which can be fully locked for super serious off-roading. Yep. But um, on the technical side, the big news, independent front suspension and electromechanical um, rack and pinion steering. So on the road, which is, let's be honest, where these are probably driven most yeah. of the time, that's gonna be a major improvement in refinement. Also, speaking of refinement, inside is hugely improved, as you just saw. There's more space, it's There's more, more comfortable, room, more, more comfortable. Tech. The vehicle's a little bit wider. And it's also lighter than it used to be. A lot lighter. Yeah. 375 pounds. What did you pounds. say it was? The weight of an average? Yeah, the, the weight of an average American, like third grader, 375 pounds. That's how much yes, it lost. Yes, yes. That's a fact. So, what else can we say about the new G Class? I mean, it'll still be a beast off road, Hello? although they know that, like, not too many people nice to are, are actually going to off road it. We're, I was wondering. So, the other really important reveal was the that mud looks fake, you're right. It, it is fake. So Stephen Elmer has a big conspiracy theory that all the mud on this previous generation G-Class is fake mm. and was like haphazardly splashed on I by like I see what artist. he means. Yeah. It does It not... just doesn't look, like that's not the regular pattern mud makes when you drive through it. So what else? I'm not buying it either. Yeah, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. The other really important reveal at Mercedes was Mercedes AMG came out with a new line of 53 series cars. And so you can see it right here. I'm so confused by the okay. nomenclature. The no. nomenclature makes no sense. However, these, this new 53 series of cars is entirely hybridized. And it is okay. the first hybridized AMG cars ever. Wow. Which is super important. Um, and similar to the system that Ram was using for its new truck, these new 53 series cars also have a 48 volt electrical nice. system and the 12 volt system. Perfect. So what that does is it'll give you all of that instant acceleration that electric cars have. So there's no turbo lag, mm -hmm. which was kind of a big problem better before. Better performance, lower consumption. And better consumption. fuel efficiency. So yeah. I think it's really important that AMG is moving forward but not going full electric like just yet. I think they're trying to break their customer base in slowly to yeah, the idea yeah. Give them, of introduce them to yeah, the electrified AMGs, tech. which I think is really cool. So the new 53s will come as a CLS, which was this one here. It'll come in the E-Class Coupe and the E-Class Cabriolet will all come as uh, 53 AMGs. Where did they get the number 53? I Are they gonna go to know. decimals next or know. fractions? I'm just... Yeah. So, let's see, these 53 models, besides being uh, powered by the 48 volt electrical system, have a, I think it's a, is it a single turbo or a twin turbo inline six? It's a good question. It is turbocharged inline six, which we're seeing more of in the industry these days. They're making a return to the inline six. Because I've heard fuel efficiency, actually, because the air's only going in and out yeah. in one continual way. I've heard that improves efficiency but somehow. But also the packaging. So because it, it basically takes up less room than a V6, right? It shouldn't. And it should be very, that's why they well, went away longer, from them. Well, it's longer, but there's more room for electrical components. Well, on either what side, they're trying yeah. To fit in. Yeah. yeah. So it takes up more room lengthwise, but there's more room on the side for, mm -hmm. you know, that 48 volt electrical system, which is so interesting. Yeah. I think that is honestly one of the, one of the most interesting innovations happening right now in the automotive sphere. The 48 volt sort of yeah. quiet revolution. Because yeah. they're they're hybrids. Like people don't really like to talk about yeah. AMGs and like Ram trucks as hybrids, mm -hmm. but they're hybrids now. And I think that's just going to become more and more normal. And it's going to be great. standard at some point in everything. There's right? really no downside. Yeah. yeah. More fuel efficiency. Yeah. More torque. Because and what the 48 volt system does for you, it provides you. You know, uh, stop start. The engine Smoother you can too. you can sail along. The mm -hmm. the 48 volt provides more torque yep. for takeoff, and it does it at very low cost because you put in like a Prius sized battery. That's big to package in the vehicle. It's very heavy. You may have to re-engineer some other components. 
it also costs a lot. But a 48 volt system, the investment can be very small and you can get a lot of benefit yeah, from it. Yeah, the payoff is huge, right? right. So that's really interesting. Um, we have a question that might be a little less technical, um, but it applies to this. Why are so many automakers doing angled headlights? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. That's a really good question. Um, part of it is that I think it's easier to engineer LEDs that are angular instead of curved. You know what I mean? Like yeah. light beams, it's just easier to do. Yeah. I, and I think they want to make them so have more dynamism, right? Yeah. It's there's all about a, movement. Yeah, like there's a whole bunch of different reasons for that. And plus it's just, it's fashionable, right? A lot of people, they want to fit in, right? Yeah. And then I think if the industry starts moving that way, a lot of other automakers kind of jump yeah. on board. But we so, were going to go to Honda, right? Because there's an important issue. Yeah, or let's two go to car. Honda. Honda and Acura had a couple of really interesting debuts too. Uh, so Jan has a question, sorry, it's probably Jan, about the new A-Class. So mm. it hasn't debuted yet, although we will be getting the new A-Class in North America mm -hmm. in the very near future. Uh, so we're heading over to the Honda booth right now. Of course, there's the Type R, which you all freak out about. <laughs> and it drives fantastically, so you're oh, right to amazing. freak out about it. It's great. I was most impressed when we drove that car by the brakes, I think. It just has so much bite. I just love, like, the, the transmission in that is so good. It's excellent. And the engine excellent, is so excellent. good. Um, so the big debut here was the Honda Insight. And so that, that's basically a civic-sized Prius fighter. They're estimating it'll get about 50 mpg. Not sure if that's combined or highway or whatever. They just said just 50 mpg. Well, that's but. true. They didn't really say. I just assumed it was combined. But, yeah. but this will be like a premium compact offering. It's supposed yeah, to sit above the above Civic. Above the Civic, yeah. yeah. But it's about civic-sized. And it looks um, a lot like the Civic. Yeah, it shares a lot I of parts it, with the Civic. Yeah, I actually think it looks a little bit more elegant than the regular Civic. But this Takes is sort of bit. the third time's the charm, maybe, for Honda in the hybrid yeah, like that. Yeah, so the, the Insight. Insight wasn't around for a really long time, yeah. and they brought it back. And, um, and, this and it one looks you nice. Can, it's yeah. a sharp car. Can't show you the interior because... There is none the right car, now. There probably yeah. isn't one. Yeah. Or if it is, it's just like you sit on a bucket or something, a yeah. Rubbermaid tub. Yeah, and because it's just a prototype, there's actually not too, too much information available yeah. right now. While we're at the Honda booth, though, um, the Accord won an important award. That's right. The 2018 Honda Accord won NAC Toys' big award for 2018 Car of the Year. That's really, really significant. Mm -hmm. NAC Toy is. Uh, NAC Toy is the North American Car Utility and Truck of the Year. Oh, there, there it is. It is. And I was, I'm actually on the jury. This is my very first year on the jury, and I'm very excited to be a part of it. Um, so it won against the Toyota Camry and the Kia Stinger. Mm, those are the finalists, Those right? were the two finalists, yeah. So yeah. it was basically which between those three. Which are tough competitors, especially the Stinger, you know which... I, to be honest, I thought the Stinger would, was really close to winning. Yeah. Do you know what the points breakdown was? Yeah, so the Accord got something like 277. Okay. The Kia was 200, like, fit, like 40 something. Like, they were really close. Yeah. And then the Camry got 77. Uh, <laughs> mm, mm. Yeah, so it's that was a little It's a fine car, bit. but it's just, this is It's just not better. as good as the Accord. Yeah, like, exactly. The Accord is so good. There are barely, there's barely anything wrong with it. They did such a good job packaging it, and it's so, well thought out. The attention to detail in this family sedan is amazing. And it's Acura really just levels of the interior whole quality. Package. Everything you could possibly want in a car like this, it does. Mm -hmm. And it does it really, really well. So congratulations to Honda. Yeah, the, the Accord is a fantastic. I like what what were the complaints we had about it in car of like the year when we were trim testing piece it? Falling yeah. off or something. Which could have been damaged Which, at some yeah, point. Yeah, that could have been but like a one off they thing. Negligible things but to gripe about. Even in our own car of the year, in Auto Guide's car of the year, it was really between the Stinger and the Accord. And the Accord <clears throat> lost by only like seven points out of 200 or something like that. No. But now we are at the Acura booth where we can see the brand new RDX. 
Yeah, this is the first full implementation of the brand's new design language. We've seen that spread across the rest of the range for a couple of years now, but this is the sort of the whole package, right? This is a brand yes. new from the ground up vehicle, and they've really integrated the styling the way yeah. they've envisioned it, right? And it's on an entirely new platform that mm -hmm. is exclusive to Acura, so exactly. they're not borrowing it from a Honda or something. They built it fresh. Um, and yeah. they said this is a prototype, but I mean, Concept, when it comes prototype, out, it'll look yeah. exactly like this. Exactly. I don't know if it'll be offered in that sort of NSX red color. I believe that's the same color you can get on the NSX, and it's stunning. It's, it's, it's really gorgeous. deep. It's like a really deep, shiny red. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So you get, uh, there's going to be a two liter turbo under the hood. Most likely sharing parts with that Type R. Yep. Everybody loves it's for good. good reason. It's a great engine. And lots of torque, but no official numbers yet. They're claiming 40% more low end torque than the V6 in today's RDX, which peaks at like 252 uh, foot pounds, I believe. Yeah. So this should be even better, I mean. Yeah, and it gets a new uh, automatic 10 speed transmission. Yes, it does. Which is really good. I mean, that's the same one they use in the Accord, right? It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's a good good look at the new RDX. You can actually check it out inside, Ben, if you want to give him a look there. There's a gentleman sitting in there, but... Oh. Ben, Ben, Ben. <laughs> Not allowed inside. Oh, I guess it's a promotional thing anyway. Yeah, Where are so we heading next, Jody? We got Acura. I'm just double checking for questions. Oh, someone, so John had a had a comment he said but did y'all say the stinger was better and i guess he's talking he's referring to the accord and so yeah so the stinger was auto guides car of the year and in general we did think it was well it won because it was better but i think the important thing to know about the stinger was that everybody knew honda would make an amazing accord mm -hmm. it was not a surprise right exactly so the kia stinger was a big surprise and, and i think that had a lot to do with why it might have won our car of the year. Well, it's also something different. It's not just a sedan. It's a liftback yeah. design. And it's rear wheel drive. And, and it's, it's rear wheel drive. And you can get two different great engines yeah. in it. And my and favorite thing about it is that every time we parked it somewhere or gave the keys to the valet mm -hmm. or something like that, everyone would freak out about it. And although I love the Accord. Because it looks special. It is right? special. But yeah. you, you know, you look at the Accord, give it to a valet person, they're like, okay, cool, bye. <laughs> they lost it in the parking lot, right? Yeah. I mean, so I mean, I think the Kia Stinger, if you're in that market for kind of like a four-door car, mm -hmm. I think it's a really compelling choice. And it's something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Yeah, so that's a little bit of the reasoning why it won our car of the year. But the and Accord, it's beautiful and, yeah. too. But they were really close. They mm -hmm. were really, really close. Six points, seven points, whatever it was. I actually didn't know which one was going to win our car of the year, too, because we had four editors scoring it, mm -hmm. and the scores just averaged out so that the Kia won. So it was yeah. really I was surprised incredible. how poorly the Alpha did, because it's such a driver's car. It sounds so good. And it just when we checked out all the points and, and averaged everything, it was like third, right? It's because third it's, it's a four. great car. I yeah. love it to death, but there's so much wrong with it. Like they, it has so many flaws. It does. It, it's too bad. I want it to win, but it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it had 84 grand was a big one, you know? But uh, let's head over to Chevy. Woo! Whoa. See, it happened. It happened. We both nearly I just died. fell off the step. <laughs> Holy That's mackerel. See, my biggest fears just happened. So we're going to head Why over. Why didn't you warn me, Jody? I didn't know that I was going to fall. Mm. Wrong. Judgment, the camera judging wasn't eyes. pointing at me, so at least <laughs> I saved myself that. We're going to talk about drugs, though. Yeah, we got so some drugs. Chevy came out with a new Silverado at the Detroit Auto Show. We're going to go check it out right now. It's on this stage here. Come on, Jodes. Hurry up. Someone had a question in there asking if we were going to the Montreal Auto Show. And unfortunately, we are not. Do there they are, have an auto show? Yeah, Montreal realize. has okay. a pretty big auto show, but they don't have any global debuts scheduled, so we're okay. not really going to be covering much yeah. of it. So this is the all-new yes, 2019 is. Chevy Silverado. Yes. It's lost the equivalent of your average American fourth grader. 450 pounds. pounds lighter than it used Although to be. Although we don't know exactly what trim or what model that is, but I would assume yeah. it's the heaviest version of the truck that's so lost the, big, the most. Yeah, so the reason for all that weight loss is that they're using a lot more aluminum now, so they're using aluminum in the hood, in the doors, in the tailgate. 
<laughs> um, and this is the first truck ever with a power opening and closing tailgate. I don't know if you can Let's try see. it out. It does. It might not this be on. This one's locked, yeah. so it's not going to work for us. Maybe we can try the red one. Actually, let's jump over there and yeah, see. Yeah, sure. Let's Looks give like it a go. Looks like that one's open. Let's give, let's it, give a it a go. Let's give it a look. See. There, you there go. we go. And you can do that from the key fob, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So yep. super convenient. So let's just close that back up. Other big news here. Oh. Maybe you lift it. I think you lift it up and it takes over. No? Mm. Interesting. Run! <laughs> she broke it. <laughs> Let me see. There we go. It's closed now. Nothing to worry about. But uh, revised engines, we're going to have a yes. pretty familiar powertrain lineup, 5.3 V8. Okay, tell us about the diesel, Jodes. Oh, and there's a step. Ben warned us this time. Thank you, Ben. Doing his job, yeah, finally. Yeah, so it'll get a new 3-liter Duramax diesel. Um, in line about six, it? In line and that's six all we diesel. know, right? Yeah, they, they haven't revealed any, like, power details or anything like that. Yeah, I think, I think they... This is only my speculation, but we knew the Ram was coming for a long time, right? Yes. And I think Chevy wanted to kind of rain on their parade to get get, get some of that attention or deflect yeah. from the Ram's attention, so they bring the Silverado out. So I think Super they're still kind early. of developing it a little bit. Exactly. Um, I but think they it's have, a little early. So they've already promised that their diesel is going to be more fuel efficient than the diesel in the F-150, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Because Ford like was claiming words. 30, yeah. but that's only an estimate, right? Yeah. I would not um, be surprised if it did better than that. Yeah. So because what if else? you're gonna if you're gonna put out an estimate, you better frickin' make that estimate and yeah. then beat that estimate, right? You better right? beat it. That's exactly. the thing. And a lot of the time, I feel like they have to be a little bit conservative when giving those yeah. estimates because they don't want to look like a fool if they can't meet exactly. it, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, so new 10-speed trans too. We've already seen that in yep. the F-150 and it in the ZL1. It was co-developed with the F1 or the uh, Ford exactly. Motor Company, which, is which shall over not there. be mentioned. <laughs> Um, um, what else was it? There was, they focused on storage. The back seats have some storage yeah. options in the back rests. Great Ooh. place to stash. Yeah, and you're, I wanted to mention... When you're smuggling Jody across the border, you I can... I know, you're just hoping the cops don't catch on, right? <laughs> but, uh, Ben, I did want to mention that the engine has really new high-tech uh, cylinder deactivation yes, technology. Yes. So apparently, it can run on only one cylinder yes. under really light loads. Exactly. Which is cool, because that means the other cylinders, the other seven, aren't running. Exactly. And they're just, you know, when you're coasting down a hill or something, you don't need all that engine. So I think it'll help them uh, hit that. It's a groundbreaking technology. It's yeah. going to add a lot to that efficiency figure, I think. It's really only use the power when you need it. But, yeah. Watch out. Be careful, Jody. Be careful. <laughs> okay. Doing a All human right. shield here in case so she falls. So that's the new Silverado. If you have any questions, <laughs> let us know. But for now, we're going to walk over to the Ford booth because they had a ton of stuff this year. They they were, yes, they're trying to steal the thunder, I think, because they brought a truck as they well. They did, yep. A little smaller. So the new Ford Ranger mm -hmm. came out at the Detroit Auto Show. Although and, it's not uh, that new. Well, really? they've been selling it in global mm -hmm. markets for a long time, but they've assured us that this is a very, very different truck from the one that's been sold on global markets. Yeah, I was on the backgrounder for it, and they told us the the frame is fully boxed, high strength steel, blah blah blah. But it's it's different from the one under the international versions. Yes. Which is like a major amount of reengineering work to do, right? Where um, is it? We'll somewhere. just have to wander around. It's probably straight back. Yeah, I see it through. Okay, let's go see that first. Then we'll go to the other really exciting Ford stuff. But, uh... And excuse the bad audio. We got the interference in the Ford. Oh, okay. So, if you are listening on Facebook right now, we uh, apologize for the poor audio. We're getting a little bit of feedback. A little yeah, bit of some uh, noise, static I think. noise in the Ford booth. Which is enormous. Yes, it is. So here so it is, the is new this. Ranger. 
folks restyled every body panel on this truck has been touched in some yeah. way even it was just to tighten up the panel gaps you, you know? know this is and a really important product for ford and i think they'll sell boatloads of it mostly because the the half ton market is so expensive yes, now yes exactly <laughs> so to get an f-150 you're paying a ton of money and i think a lot of truck buyers even have been, a like, base f-150 yeah, is expensive. crazy and right? so you know i think a lot of people have been priced out of that market and so with this new smaller truck i think a lot of people who maybe couldn't afford an f-150 can get yeah. back into that market and this like the ram is only going to be with four doors short or long mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so no sort of work grade, yep. you know, what the plumber would drive or something no. if he's coming to your house. And there's only one engine right now, so it'll only come with the 2.3 liter EcoBoost yep. four cylinder, right? But yeah, that's supposedly reworked for truck duty, yep. retuned, and they claim it's going to be super durable. Of course. Uh, as it needs to be in a, yeah. in a truck. Also, and the new uh, the 10-speed auto. 10-speed like as in, well. It's the same one that's in the uh, F-150. And that's curiously the only drivetrain they're talking about, at least for now. They might have some more down the road. No manual, which is kind of unfair. Eh. But they wouldn't sell any, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll always complain about that, but <laughs> we're really the only people who care. And should arrive Q1 of next year. So if you're looking for a Ranger, don't be looking too soon. You gotta wait. They're still like another year. Out. Yeah. yeah. Which They're is gonna... confusing to me because I mean they sell it already in other markets. So it's federalizing it and, and yeah. building cars is hard. There are a lot of parts, you know. I know. And Where is this one built? Michigan Assembly. Cool. Not okay. not at like probably twenty miles from where we're standing. Which nice. is kinda neat. That is pretty yeah. cool. It's local, Michigan bred. Yeah. By American. <laughs> Internationally <laughs> engineered. Yeah. Michigan made. Have you guys share the mic of the audio? Audio. Okay, so Jody, we're gonna share okay. the mic then. Let's go. Okay, so there's something right here we can look at. Talking. Okay, yes, the edge. We got yeah. a new edge. So this. Oh. Just talk, talking to the mic and. Okay, so this is the new Ford. Well, it's not new. It's refreshed. Yeah. For 2018, and it's the Ford Edge. So someone else was. Someone asked a question about uh, family-sized crossovers. This is one of them. Only two rows of seats. Only though. two rows, but it can comfortably fit a family. Um, and so. Water. Hmm. Water. Okay. And so this was really cool because it's the first crossover that's ever been ST tuned. And so they're, uh, it's a higher performing model of the popular Edge. Um, and it's even being considered for the ST performance driving school. So if you buy a Ford ST, like a Focus or a Fiesta or something like that, you get a free driving school, free stint in a driving school, just to make sure you can handle all that awesome new car you got. So, what can we say about this? The Ford ST will get a 2.7 liter twin turbo EcoBoost V6. And that gets 335 horsepower and 380 pound feet of torque. All wheel drive is standard because it, <laughs> that would be ridiculous if all that was just going to the front wheels. <laughs> I'm okay for now. Thanks, Craig. And, uh,. Yeah, this is a new addition to the lineup. Other than that, there was a the regular Ford Edge that came out that's still powered by the 2-liter EcoBoost. What other big news is that it has internet connectivity. Yeah, and you a, can, a bunch of advanced driver assistance technologies they're adding that are going to be standard. Of course. Yeah. And... Um, there's a new eight-speed transmission. You probably mentioned that with the ST as well, because it's going in there. And a uh, five-horsepower bump from the two-liter EcoBoost engine. So overall, it should drive better yeah. and uh, be more efficient. But yeah, I mean, I mean it looks, they, they changed yeah. the looks a little bit. They gave it a new grill, new headlights, stuff like that. Yeah, new grill, headlights, um, just freshened up the design. They made it uh, change the bumpers as well to sort of make it look lower and wider and uh, but to me do you see a lot of uh, do you see any hyundai santa fe or gmc i've heard a lot of that actually but i mean they're crossovers like they're all going to look kind of similar so it doesn't really bother me too too much there's only so much you can do with that sort of elevated two box yeah, shape exactly. right but on to something much much more exciting <laughs> ben look over here look over here ben look 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 what's this this is the new bullet mustang Oh. Bullet. And uh, this year marks the 50th anniversary of the famous Bullet movie with Steve McQueen, who is a certified badass. 
Can you say that on Facebook? Ass! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the bullet, the new bullet, is based on the GT. Yep. So it has a beautiful Coyote V8 under the hood. Brembo's. Isn't it 475 horsepower? That's correct. Nice. Nice. And of course it has, oh, of course it has a lot of the black details that were in the original bullet car, which is right over here. And that one was lost for quite some time. It's like a crazy story, isn't story it? story behind as the far as, bullet? Well, didn't, I, I heard they had maybe two of them they built for the movie. And um, I guess one was destroyed or lost. And then they found this one which uh, you can see has beautiful patina on it. I mean, looks like they put a new bumper and some other replacement parts on, the but looks new. yes, exactly. But this is it. This is the bullet. So Steve McQueen like drove that. He could say. well have driven it, yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> so what, what we got, the, the bullet model gets green paint, manual only, yep. like a cue ball shifter. Um, comes more in power. The beautiful green, also a black, I believe. Um, so there is a little bit of choice. A little bit, but it has to be green. If I got it, it would be green. Yeah, to get anything less than green would be a shame. Yeah. So, is this our last stop? We're it, finishing up at is. Ford, I think. So yeah, if you've got any last minute questions, toss them up there in the chat. We'll do our best to answer them. But uh, maybe we'll wander away from the Ford booth just because we've been having audio issues. Yeah. So take one last look at the bullet Mustang. Back to kind of where we started, maybe. Maybe uh, this GMC display will work. Or yeah, sure. Something. So Craig, what was your favorite reveal of oh, the whole show? Oh, come on. I don't know. It's so hard to... I know. I would say the Ram because it's the most important. The truck looks great. The interior is really nice. There's tons of great technology mm -hmm. there. They're going to sell a ton of them. Um, and I think it's kind of eating the Silverado's lunch, you know? I mean, the, it, like, yeah. in every way, the Silverado just seems less Ooh. nice. We got a question. Know? Any word about the GT500? Some Jonathan Yarkany. Yarkany? Yarkany. Jonathan. <laughs> he wants to know about the GT500. And word is Ford confirmed, I think either today or yesterday, that it will indeed make a return and it'll mm -hmm. have. Hellcat beating power. Because you gotta beat Hellcat. Yeah, it'll have you over can't. 700 horsepower. Of course, That's a lot supercharged of V8. It's crazy. Other than that, there's not much information. I don't know when it's gonna be uh, They're unveiled. They're gonna trickle it out over months, I'm sure. They're gonna do, yeah. yeah. It'll be like one week we'll get a teaser image of yeah. like a tail light, and then the next week we'll get <laughs> sounds. Well, and you can <laughs> pa patch them all together in Photoshop and get a good idea oh, of what the dear. vehicle looks like, right? That's annoying. But think if it if it has 700 horsepower, it's gonna weigh a bit less than either a Challenger or a Charger Hellcat, I would think, because it's a smaller car, right? Yeah, and it's also so it a should be even chassis. faster. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I, I mean, don't know how fast you need to go. I mean, we love the GT350, right, and the R, which mm -hmm. is like one of my favorite cars ever. And yeah. if you can imagine that, but even nuts, even more like, crazy. I don't know why you need more than that, right? I mean, unless you racetrack, go to the racetrack every yeah. week, right? And that's what then, it's built yeah, for, right? Do that, but yeah. But in normal driving, it's no crazy. One. It's yeah. so fast. You just immediately get arrested, which is kind of fun, maybe. I don't you used to get bragging rights or something. I don't know. <laughs> I got arrested um, before you did. Any I'm just looking questions? for more questions. So we had a question earlier. Is the GMC truck behind us that was behind us, this one right here, <laughs> is it better than the Ram? And you can't really, because this is a concept car, so I just wanted to point that out first. If you're counting tank treads, yes. It's it absolutely, is it is 4,000% 4, 4, better. better. <laughs> I mean, if you're talking about mountain, graphics of mountains, yes, it's also better than the Ram. This is kind of cool. I want to. Didn't didn't uh, somebody review one of the Nissan like a Rogue with these tank tread things on yeah, it? Yeah, they basically drove it up a, like a ski mountain or something. It'd be kind of cool to try. Not gonna lie, I'd, I, I'd I don't know if it give it a shot. Works. Like, have you ever seen footage of this I've running? I've seen them. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like the experts only. <laughs> only hardcore people allowed. Very cool. Know your limits, Jody. Drink Play within it. Safe. it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's cool. a wrap then. Yeah. Unless there are any last minute I mean, questions. If you guys had any more questions, let us know. Um, oh, interestingly, there is a Chinese automaker here 
They've been here for three years in a row now, and so they're really trying to make a push to they're enter the North American too. market. They're getting bigger, too. They've got, like, prime real yeah, let's estate just, here. let's just do a quick jaunt over there. G-A-C. GAC. GAC. It's just G-A-C, which GAC. stands for Guangzhou Automotive Company or something, something like that. Like that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they've promised that they're going to enter the North American market in 2019. Which like is next very year? Soon. Yeah. Uh, but they don't have a dealer network. They don't have any of that stuff. You don't so. just decide one day, I'm going to sell cars. Yeah. I'm going to build and sell cars. And so they're basically going to, the first car that they might arrive with is obviously going to be a crossover because that's what everyone wants. Mm -hmm. But they've got a full lineup of vehicles here. Yeah, they, this have, is they interesting. have a full lineup. I mean, they sell, I think it's China's like <clears throat> biggest automaker or something like that. Mm. Like this GS3 here, Jody. And I think it would have to be the, anything that a Chinese automaker will sell in North America, I think has to be priced so yes, cheaply. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. The, um, guess, let's be honest, they don't have a reputation necessarily for building the highest quality yeah. stuff. Yeah, and especially Because for a new it's not that they can't. You, it's just the companies that build there want the cheapest price, right? Exactly. So when price is an object, the quality tends to be less. Yeah, but I mean, they have a lot of interesting products here. And they even came out with a concept car. Ben, if you want to look over here, this is the Enverge concept. Looks pretty cool. I don't know too much about it. Neither do I. Yeah. But it's got, it's got cool, cool doors. I was just going to say, check yeah. out the doors. I bet, it's, I bet it's like electric and stuff too. Shall we check out this like Tiguan slash that looks like, like a Nissan Rogue, Rogue Sport or Murano. Or something like yeah. That, yeah. Let's wander. Let's see. Looks pretty decent. Yeah. I mean, it's it's nothing groundbreaking, but I bet it will be like priced really, really well. Yeah. It's got it. It has a Kia look to it. Very cool. Yeah. Wish them the best of luck. Yeah. It's got like nice materials. And if the price is right, you know, yeah. It, if it's priced accordingly, I think people will buy it. I mean, even like the what the Buick. The Buick makes cars in China now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Oh, they're huge in yeah. China. Yeah, oh, they're incredibly huge. And so I, I don't think you know Chinese built cars are going to be that unusual going forward. Yeah. But a Chinese automaker might take some getting used to. All right. Well, I'm done. So, Joe, do you sign off on okay. the show? I needed to sit down. Thank you everybody for tuning in to our live broadcast. Uh, we are here at the Detroit Auto Show. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. We'll see you at the next one. Craig sleeping. Hey, why don't you subscribe to the AutoGuide.com YouTube channel? That way you never miss any of our coverage from the 2018 Detroit Auto Show. And of course, a whole lot more.